Hello bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Um, last week, or I think it was the week before, so two weeks ago I made a video called how to encourage buildup in your hive and it just went nuts. And then I went back and looked through and realized that some of the best performing videos that I've ever done were how to's. And seeing as it's May 30th and a lot of us are thinking about splits, I figured I'd do a how to split your hive. Um, this one is going to be geared toward a simple walkaway split. So this is for the absolute beginner or the <laughs> person with very limited free time or very limited time uh, with which to play with their bees. And uh, it, it, this is just as simple as it gets. I think a lot of people go to uh, their hive thinking about splitting with a lot of apprehension and a lot of, you know, you're timid and you're not sure of yourself, but hopefully this video will make you a little bit more confident and realize that it is not as hard as it might seem. So we are going to split this hive, like I said, walk away split style. Now, what does a hive need to be able to be split? Uh, obviously, ideally, it will have a lot of everything, a lot of bees, a lot of brood, a lot of food in both nectar or honey and, uh, and bee bread pollen. But uh, the absolute essentials are only bees enough to keep the brood in each half warm and eggs or very young larvae in whichever half does not have the queen so um, because like i said in a lot of videos in the past you know that's all they need if, if the bees know they're queenless and they have an egg or they have uh, uh, very young larvae they will turn that into a queen very quickly and readily so in terms of a walkaway split with a hive that is at least two brood chambers tall, and this looks three, but there's a queen excluder right there, I think. Um, in 99% of the cases, you're going to be able to just take one box and set it in a new location. You're not going to have to find the queen. You're not going to have to go frame to frame. Uh, what I will suggest, though, is that you at least very quickly make sure that there are eggs in both boxes. If you don't see eggs in one box, you know, grab a, a frame from, from the other one and put it in there just to be sure. Uh, because if they don't have a queen and they don't have anything that is uh, a viable, you know, of viable age, then they will become what's called hopelessly queenless and you'll get laying workers and you'll have to do a whole lot of stuff to repair that problem. So. We're going to make sure that there are eggs in both boxes, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to go deeper into this process, you can find the queen and make sure that you move her to a different location. So therefore, the queenless half will get the benefit of all the returning foragers. But if both boxes are populated well, um, then that shouldn't even really truly be necessary. It's just a, an added step and a little bit of insurance. So let's see what we see and talk about it as we go through. not going to go through this honey box very up very much it was just added uh, a couple days ago so there's probably not a whole lot going on in there just set it off to the side all right this box looks pretty good as I expected it to There are bees covering, what, maybe six frames up here. So I'm gonna quickly, as I said, make sure that there are eggs up here. If there aren't, I will make sure that there are before I close these up. That's food. All right, there are eggs in the emerged portion of this. And there's a lot of brood there. And it looks like a lot more of pretty much everything throughout the rest of this box. So I have confirmed there are eggs 
in this top box. So that's all you need to do in a walk away split. I am going to remove it and do the same with the bottom box. Okay, so the bees are covering nine frames down here. Everything except for that crappy old frame. And once again, all I need to do is make sure that there are eggs. That is food. That is some more food on both sides. There's a little bit of brood surrounded by mostly food. And the other side has eggs and the queen right by my thumb there, um, which is, that was not the goal. Once again, you do not have to find your queen utilizing this split method, but if you do, then you'll know, and you'll be able to treat each half, you know, in the way that you would treat a, you know, a queenless and a queen right portion of a split. So what I'm going to go do is grab a bottom board and another cover and I'm going to move the queen right portion but remember it would not have mattered they both have the ability to make a queen and they're both uh, you know packed enough with nurse bees to where they're not going to get any chilled brood or anything but I'll be right back after grabbing a bottom board and a cover. Okay, so let's pretend that I didn't find the queen and I don't have any idea which box she's in. <clears throat> so I'm just going to randomly select this one because it has more bees in it to go to the new location. Because the foragers are going to return here. So if you don't know which one the queen is in, leave the less populated half in the uh, old location. Oh boy, that's a heavy box. Okay, get off the cover or the bottom board, guys. Try not to squish them. Okay, so the only other stuff that I can think of to make sure of is that you're not leaving one um, vastly depleted in terms of anything. Food, bees, or brood. Um, like I said before, if you do know which one the queen is in, uh, it's my suggestion that you move the queen to a new location. It does not have to be multiple miles away. As long as there are nurse bees in both boxes, then both boxes will retain a decent population of bees. Um, but like I said, the foragers will return to the old location. <sighs> and uh, a queen will emerge um, somewhere around two weeks after you set that out. Uh, it takes 16, 17-ish 
right, right around, uh, you know, 16 and a half days for a queen to emerge after the egg is laid. And they usually choose a, about a two day old larvae. So maybe a little under two weeks before the queen will emerge and then give it another two weeks for her to have the opportunity to go out and get mated and come back. And then after that uh, four week or 30 day period, you should be seeing eggs. And if you don't, then uh, you can recombine those hives or allow them to try again and give them some open brood uh, consisting of at least partially some eggs. Um, but uh, you can get in there in two weeks. I don't suggest getting in there before then because you might rip a cell apart. But get in there in two weeks and go searching for a virgin queen. Uh, they're hard to find, but uh, you know you get better at it uh, over time. But usually there's not a whole lot of reason because there's not a whole lot you can do at that time. So you won't know whether you found her or, or if she's just being... Uh, you won't know if she's in there um, if you don't find her. Uh, because sometimes she's just impossible to find. And, uh, and so you won't really be able to tell whether you uh, had a successful split or not until you either see eggs or too much time has passed. But don't think too hard about that. At this point in the process, uh, the vast majority of splits end up with, uh, with a nice fat mated queen after that 28 to 30 day period. So yeah, that's just as easy as it is. Um, the, another benefit to splitting this way is that you're, uh, you're kind of hitting the, the mites a little bit, especially if you give the queen right portion uh, less capped brood then the queenless portion will have a break in the brood cycle and the queen right portion will have gotten rid of all or most of their foundress mites. So uh, if you listen to me talk about mite management, I suggest splitting every hive every year in this method um, for that reason. So, but yeah, this is how you make a walkaway split or how to split your hive the easy way or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Um, thanks for so much support over the last two weeks. That's pretty crazy, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, click like if you liked it. Click subscribe if you're not already. But get out and have some fun with your bees. See ya.